Hi guys, and welcome to this Blender tutorial about how to make the Terra Blade from Terraria, which is one of my favorite games. This episode will cover the modeling, and next episode will be about lighting and materials. So the first thing to do is set up some photo references. This might be a bit too many, uh, so I'm going to close some of them eventually. And then realize that Blender 2.8 doesn't really have the old reference system, so what you're going to have to do is import a reference image uh, through the Shift A dialog. Now, to try to model the hilt first, uh, you could try using a plane, but that's not going to work very well, so I suggest you use a cube, which you are going to split in half and mirror. Now, I don't realize this, but you can actually rotate the reference image so you don't have to work on, work on such a weird angle. So you should do that. It's actually a selectable object. Now when you mirror things, um, you should turn on clipping just so that the objects don't go through each other when you're moving them towards. Um, each other, and you should clean up the mesh a little bit. Remove doubles, which are just where vertices are coincident, which will lead to some rendering problems. Now, the hilt or whatever of this blade looks a little bit weird, uh, so we're trying to get around that. Also, I'm going to add in the handle as a separate object later. Alright, so for that sharp look, we need to take out sort of a middle section and uh, scale it outwards. And you'll see what I mean later when I model the blade, because it'll be a little bit more obvious then. Okay, so the geometry is also a little bit screwed up, so I'll fix that. Let's delete all the faces and like put them back together in place. Okay, now to smooth things out, you want to add a subdivide. Uh, and you also want to crease it with Shift E uh, on the places where you want the subdivide to, or the model to remain sharp. Okay, looks all right so far. We have this hexagonal area for the handle to fit in, and another thing on the end to fit in the blade. Now, uh, I have these weird concave sections in the front of the hilt, which is going to end up looking a bit weird, but we can worry about that later. Now when you mirror things, you can't really inset, so you need to extrude and scale down. Okay, you can see that weird... Uh, uh, artifact, which you can remove by changing the S-Split modifier. Okay, so for the handle, uh, one way of going about this is by using a cylinder and like scaling it, but that's a little bit time consuming. So I'm going to drop this, and I'm going to try something else. <coughs> okay, instead, why don't we take a circle uh, we'll make a disc sort of ring at the end, and we're also going to add a circle. A circle. Twist it a little bit, um, extrude a middle part, and add an array modifier. So this small section is repeated across uh, the handle just a couple of times. Uh, make sure to have it array. Make sure to have the array repeat on the correct axes just so it looks right. And yeah, that's how we can connect it to the end. Okay, now time for the blade. You want to start with a cube which you flatten out on the z-axis, so uh, SZ. Uh, and then we want to fit the sort of outline to the model. And here's where I realize you can rotate the reference image so that it'll fit. Uh, turns out I made the handle a little bit too small, so I'm going to have to widen it. And so this blade is a little bit weird because it has pieces like jutting out all over the place. And also holes, which we'll 
uh, show you how to cut out later. Okay, so this is what I mean for the uh, sharp edge sort of look. We're trying to make a bevel on the end of the blade, so it, so light will reflect off of the edge, where it starts going from flat to sharp at an angle. But doing it this way is maybe not the best idea, and I'll show you why. Now, because I used a cube and I didn't realize that you could mirror it on the uh, horizontal plane, that is on the vertical axis, the top and bottom sides are going to be a little bit asymmetrical, and that's pretty bad if you want it to look, you know, good. So I will end up deleting this later, and I will replace it with a single vertex which I used to trace everything out. Uh, but that will come in a moment. Right now we're just going to do that same subdivide and crease sort of thing to make everything look sharp and smooth. So basically what we're doing is creasing the edges and then creasing the edges a block away from uh, from like the edges of the mesh. Okay, now I'm going to try to mirror it. This is not going to go well because it's not symmetrical, so I'm going to get some very messed up bases. Uh, I'm going to try to fix it here by trying to fill it, but the that's not going so well. So I'm going to give up in a second and delete this whole thing and try again. And this time it'll be a lot faster because I actually start with a cube. I'm going to collapse into a vertex and then I'm literally just going to trace the edges of the terror blade. Just like that. Then I'm going to extrude it. Or I'm going to fix the edges first, and then I'm going to extrude it. There, now, there used to be an option in 2.79 called Grid Fill, but uh, I can't find that anymore. So, it uh, looks like we're just going to fill it normally uh, with F. And there's that artifact there, because there are two planes, which I didn't notice. So we're going to eliminate one of them, and just fill it and extrude it downwards. So this is going to be our middle part, and see, we're going to cut it in the middle, and then scale that outwards, and we get that sharp beveled edge look that we're looking for. Okay, great. So it's looking alright right now. Uh, we're still going to crease the edges, and we're going to subdivide. Give it a sharp look. Now again, since these edges and the angles connecting them are very shallow, the edge split modifier tends to misbehave a little bit. So we're going to have to adjust it a lot. Also, we're mirroring it on the z-axis this time to prevent it being extremely asymmetrical. Okay, so playing with the split angle to see what works, and I might actually have to just scale up the blade just to increase that angle a little bit. There we go, that's almost it. We still need to make the holes, but I'm going to just set up some lighting first so it looks okay, and I'm going to fix up some uh, rendering artifacts. This concavity is not looking very good, so we'll have to fix it a little bit just by nudging some of the vertices. There we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, we'll just make sure the blade fits in the blade slot, just by scaling and translating it a little bit. 
Okay, and now we're going to cut the holes, and we're going to do this with a boolean modifier. So we're going to add the shapes of the holes, uh, the... I'm going to call them cutouts. And what we're going to do is we're going to join them into a single object, so we only need to apply one boolean modifier. Then we're going to select the blade, add a boolean modifier. We keep the operation as difference. Uh, we set the object that we're cutting it with to be the cutout, and then we're going to hide it so we can actually see the cutout. And there we go, we have nice looking slices right up through the middle, very clean. And you also want to make sure that these cylinders are hidden during the actual rendering. And what's cool about this is that you can actually ch change the shape of the holes on the go, which is quite nice. And there we go. Um, so that's the end of the model. Uh, we finished most of it, and we're pretty much done for this whole modeling section. Uh, tune in in two weeks to see the next part of this, where I'm going to texture and light the whole scene. Thanks for watching.